We're now creating a deck of cards where a deck is represented by a list of strings. We're now going to continue into dealing a hand of cards where we'll take a deck and then we'll deal some number of cards out of it. So it's like kind of creating a hand for an individual player. Let's look at a diagram of what that's going to look like. The, the method signature of deal will look very much like all the other methods that we've implemented so far. So remember how we implement methods in Elixir. We pass in some arguments internally, we kind of chop up the input data, and then we return the absolute like total output, everything having to do with that deck of cards now. This is likely going to be the best example of immutability in Elixir that we've seen so far. So remember, there's no concept of modifying the existing deck of cards. We are instead returning a completely new deck that only has the remaining cards. In the example I've got up here right now, we have an array of five cards, and we're specifying that we want a hand of two cards back. So the result from the method is a list of three cards, the three that are still in the deck, and then another list of two cards, which is the hand that we just requested to be created. So this is going to be immutability in action. We're not modifying the deck that came in. We are creating a completely new deck instead and returning that. So we can start this out by setting up our method signature. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit and we'll add on our deal method. So we'll say def deal and we'll have arguments of a deck that we're going to deal from and a hand size. So basically the high size of the hand, like how many cards do we want in this new deck? So the task that we are trying to accomplish here, like basically splitting the list into two separate lists, is another operation that's very common in the Elixir world. So as a matter of fact, the enum module, which we can look up documentation for again, I'm going to flip it back open, and then go back to enum, has a method in here called split. So if I scroll way down, down to our S's, split, here we go. So here's split, it's going to take an enumerable, which for us is basically like a list, an account, and it's going to then split that list into two separate items or two separate lists. So this is the method that we're going to be using. One thing that I want to point out here again, I know that it probably seems like using all these built-in methods is a little bit cheaty or something like that, but I really want to make it very clear that in Elixir, we really delegate to these built-in methods as opposed to writing like our own for loops or something like that. Like wherever possible, we delegate to existing methods. And so again, I know I've mentioned it a couple times, wherever possible, we want to do some reasonable amount of research to see if this, what might be a very common operation uh, is available to us already, or you know, it's available as a helper. So with this enum.split, we can pass in our list and then the number of records that we want in the first list and then the remainder, remainder gets stuffed into the, the rest here. So let's give this a shot. Uh, I'm going to call enum.split and we're going to split our deck by the hand size. All right, so let's see what this looks like inside of our shell now. This isn't the whole shebang, so bear with me just for a little bit. So we're going to kind of discover something a little bit interesting here. So I'll recompile. I'll say deck is cards.create deck. And then I can call cards.deal, pass in the deck that I just created, and I'll say that I want a hand of like five cards. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it appears that we've got a list right here of five records, and then some like, I don't know, rest of the list down here. But notice what's kind of interesting here, we have both these records are wrapped by this set of curly braces right here. So that's a little bit unexpected. These curly braces are another very common data structure in Elixir, just like lists, right? We've been working with lists so far, that is a data structure. This is another data structure represented by the curly braces called a tuple. And tuple is spelled like T-U-P-L-E, like that. Let's check out a diagram to figure out what a tuple is. So this is kind of what's going on behind the scenes right here. We're calling enum.split, passing our deck and the hand size. And I want to point out the result to you. Like the result here is the hand that we just generated is always at index zero, right? Like it's always at index zero. That's, that's what it certainly appears to be here. Like here's the hand that I just created. And I know it's the hand because I said specifically give me like five cards in it. 
then the rest of the cards out of the deck is always at index one or like the second element in this kind of collection of records, like whatever it is right here. So here's what a tuple is. Here's exactly what it is. A tuple is like an array where each index has a very special meaning. Okay. And when I say special meaning, I'm saying like special meaning to you and me as the developers. Like we're saying that whenever I call this deal method, I always expect the first argument, or excuse me, the first element and the tuple to be the hand that was dealt. And then the rest, or the second element, excuse me, is the rest of the deck. And so when I say like special meaning, I literally just mean that you are going to just remember in your head, okay, first element, always the hand, second element, always the rest of the deck. And solely by that kind of you know, contract that we're, we're specifying here, solely by the fact that we're saying this is the order of elements, that is exactly what forms a tuple. So if you come from a background, um, I'm gonna add just a little bit of code down here at the bottom. Uh, don't, don't add this in, this is just a for example. So when we call cards.deal with a deck in like five, and by the way, to put comments in Elixir, I know I haven't mentioned this, but we can just use the pound sign. So I'll add a comment right here. We're saying that the first result is always gonna be like the hand, and the second is always the deck, right? If you've got a background in say Ruby or JavaScript, both fantastic examples, what this might make a little bit more sense as is if we returned an object like hand was an array of cards and deck was an array of cards, right? So this would be an object in JavaScript or a hash in Ruby. And so if I said, oh yeah, here's like a key value pair, the hand is always gonna have the hand that was dealt and the deck is always gonna be the rest of the cards. You would probably say, okay, like, yeah, that, that sounds reasonable. And so we're doing the exact same thing here with a tuple, but instead of using a key value pair, we're saying the first index is gonna be the hand, the second index is gonna be the deck. Okay, so I know I'm kind of really beating the dead horse here just a little bit, um, but I just wanna make sure that it's very clear what the difference between a tuple and a list is. A list is for a collection of similar records, a tuple is for that can be stuff of completely different type, but the order specifies some meaning. All right, so I'm gonna clean this code up. And then I'm gonna go back over to our shell. And now I'm gonna say, okay, like, sure, we know what the tuple is, right? Uh, yeah, we get it, we get it. The first element is the hand. Yeah, 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 whatever, 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 okay. So now my question is, how do I get access to this hand right here? How do I get, like, literally that hand? Like, I wanna have something that says, like, hand equals, cards.deal deck at five. And if I was doing this with like another language, I might put down like at zero to specify, yeah, I want the first element within that tuple, right? So let's let's try running that. And oh, wow, that's, okay, that's some nasty stuff right there. So obviously I don't really have anything like this kind of index notation right here where I try to fetch the first record out of the tuple. So it certainly appears that our traditional methods of getting access to elements in an array isn't effective here in Elixir at all. So let's continue in the next section and start talking about how we get access to values inside of a tuple.